Hello and welcome to Raj Sabha TV. You're watching the big picture with the host Rajat Kain. As Vice President of India M. Venkaiya Naidu begins his four-day official visit to Vietnam, we look at India's comprehensive strategic partnership with the Southeast Asian nation. In his pack tour, the Vice President will hold one-on-one -on -one talks with the leaders of Vietnam, participate in 16th United Nations Day of Visakh, and deliver a keynote address at the inaugural session of the event themed as Buddhist approach to global leadership and shared responsibilities for sustainable societies. During high-level talks, the two sides are expected to discuss a wide range of issues, including trade and investment relations, given better market access to India's exports, exploring opportunities in oil and gas sector, seeking support for Indian pharmaceutical facilities in Vietnam, cooperation in defense and space technologies, training and capacity building of Vietnamese defense forces and strengthening of cultural bonds between the nations are expected to figure during the talks. To discuss more on this significant visit by the Vice President, we are joined in the studio by guest Brigadier Vinod Anand, Senior Fellow, Vivekanand International Foundation, Ashok Sajanhar, former diplomat, and Harsh V. Panth, Distinguished Fellow, ORF. Thank you, all of you, for joining us. Uh, Mr. Sajanhar, I'd like to begin with you. Uh, could you just, for the benefit of viewers, could you elucidate on the history between the two nations? I mean, we, we our, our ties date back a long way, but not much perhaps is known about Vietnam. You are very right, uh, Rajat. Uh, the bilateral relations between India and Vietnam are truly uh, historical, civilizational, cultural, and uh, there is a uh, they are marked by mutual respect, by mutual trust, uh, mutual understanding. Of course, both the countries also cooperate very strongly in uh, bilaterally, but also mm -hmm. in regional and international fora. Uh, in the area of uh, uh, political relations between the two countries, uh, the uh, strategic partnership was established in 2007 and mm. this was upgraded to a comprehensive strategic partnership in 2016. In fact, uh, there are only two countries, other countries uh, in addition to India, with whom Vietnam has uh, such a comprehensive strategic partnership. Those are China and Russia. Uh, this was done uh, during the visit of uh, Prime Minister Modi to uh, Vietnam in September 2016. That was mm. uh, a very significant visit. Actually, it was the first bilateral visit by an Indian Prime Minister to Vietnam after 2001. So, you know, after a gap of about 15 years. Uh, 2017, over the last few years, our relations have really expanded, have really grown and have really strengthened. Uh, 2017 was a very significant year because it marked the 10th anniversary of the establishment of the strategic partnership and 45th anniversary of the establishment of bilateral relations in 1972. So a large number of visits have take, uh, took place in 2017. Again in 2018, uh, it was a landmark year in terms of bringing the two countries together. In uh, January of last year, we had the visit of the Vietnamese Prime Minister when he came here to participate in the uh, uh, as a chief guest, one of the chief guests in uh, chief guests in the uh, in India's Republic Day celebration mm -hmm. on uh, 26 January and on 25th January there was the commemorative summit, the 25th yeah. commemorative summit uh, for uh, India's uh, dialogue relationship with the ASEAN. In March of last year we had the Vietnamese President coming to India. Mm -hmm. And end of the year, we also saw the India's Prime Minister going to, uh, to Vietnam. So politically, there has been a very rapid interaction. Now, if you were to look at some of the sectors, some of the areas where both the countries are cooperating, defense and security has emerged as a very important area. Because uh, there is, uh, whether it is the area of South China Sea, whether it is the area of uh, uh, Vietnam's uh, uh, exclusive economic zone, so there are these uh, issues uh, uh, which bring both the countries together. When uh, our pr president, uh, Mr. Pranam Mukherjee, he had visited uh, Vietnam in September 2014. Then there was a line of credit of $100 million that was given to Vietnam to purchase uh, four uh, 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 petrol uh, vessels. Mm -hmm. And work on that has already started. When uh, Prime Minister Modi visited then a line of credit of $500 million was given. So 
So defense and security has emerged an important area of cooperation. But in addition to that, uh, there is also trade and commerce. You mentioned about pharmaceuticals, you mentioned about access uh, uh, to Indian goods in uh, Vietnam. Uh, currently, the bilateral trade exchanges are to the tune of about $13 billion. And it is, uh, we expect to increase it to $15 billion by 2020. Right. So there are a large number of areas uh, and uh, be... uh, these are some of the fields in which uh, uh, talks will be held and effort made to further enhance and further strengthen bilateral ties. Right, right. Professor Pant, I mean, given uh, the visit now by the vi vice president level, what do you see of the visit? I mean, what do you make out of it? What are the, what possibly would be the, with the take home from the visit? Uh, I think uh, one of the aspects which uh, perhaps, uh, you know, um, makes India-Vietnam relationship at this juncture very important and special uh, is the prism through which both of them look at regional security, which are quite similar. Mm -hmm. And I think that makes a sort of a strategic congruence between the two uh, very palpable and, app and apparent. And I think that's the reason perhaps why we have seen, uh, as the ambassador was describing, uh, such a great degree of political uh, back and forth between the two countries. And there is a great political convergence that has emerged. And that is largely reflective of some of the ground realities that we see in the region and how the two, both Hanoi and New Delhi, look at how the regional strategic environment is, is shaping up. Mm. Uh, so a lot, of the, a lot of the dimensions of this relationship where perhaps uh, the conversation will go forward is what, what is happening in the region, uh, what is happening in the maritime space, and also bilaterally what you can do in terms of enhancing uh, as you pointed out, uh, certain uh, you know India's market access in certain critical areas, which which India has been trying to uh, push for. So in in this sense, uh, uh, Vietnam has emerged as a very important votary of uh, for Indian interest in the larger ASEAN construct, mm -hmm. in the larger South Asia, Southeast Asian region, which perhaps uh, makes Vietnam also very important for India, and therefore uh, this sustained level of bilateral cooperation. And I think I am sure uh, this visit will also look at uh, some of those regional area issues where perhaps India can further in, uh, push the agenda. And of course, there is defense and security, bilateral right. defense and security, where we have been upping the ante, if, if you will, on, on, a, on a range of issues. And uh, we hope to see a lot of them uh, bringing, uh, you know, becoming more fruitful, becoming more um, sort of solidified during this visit. Uh, and over the course of the next few years, as we look at this relationship as one of the pillars of India's engagement in the larger Southeast Asian region. Brigadier Anand, I mean, we just uh, wrapped up the second bilateral naval exercise in April this year. I mean, from the mm -hmm. core strategic point of view, where do you see the two countries' interest meeting? What are those core areas you'd like to point out? Uh, in all the all the three services we've been uh, cooperating uh, with uh, Vietnam, and in fact, the Indian Armed Forces they are very uh, appreciative of how Vietnam dealt with the French first in Dien Bien Phu in 1953 and thereafter the Americans in 1975 and as also the America, uh, the, the Chinese in 1979. And uh, the cooperation on the defense aspects has been there uh, for very long and in 2015 there was a five-year uh, defense uh, Operation or a joint vision was uh, mm -hmm. uh, mentioned or uh, agreed to, in which uh, the most important area was the capacity building of the Vietnamese forces, uh, both uh, the Navy, the Air Force, as well as the uh, Army. And in that, uh, it was not only the uh, cooperation in the defense area, also in the space. Uh, there is a uh, Earth satellite uh, observation tracking and uh, telemetry station that has been established. Though it's part of the uh, India Asian program, mm -hmm. but uh, Vietnam gets uh, some special uh, facilities like uh, uh, downloading the uh, uh, satellite uh, photos. Uh, which provide them uh, the maritime domain awareness mm -hmm. of uh, what's happening in South China Sea. Uh, so to that extent, uh, India has been also uh, regularly exercising, uh, carrying out uh, bilateral exercises 
the one which you mentioned, that's almost an annual feature. Yep. Uh, Vietnam Navy also takes part in uh, many of the uh, multilateral uh, uh, naval exercises which India initiates, like the Milan, Milan series of uh, exercises. And in addition, uh, uh, Vietnam, as part of the ADDM Plus uh, uh, framework, uh, their armed forces are also cooperating with uh, India. Uh, so there are many aspects on which uh, India and Vietnam are cooperating. Mm -hmm. uh, last year, in fact, uh, in Hanoi, the Bharat Electronics uh, has opened an office to, uh, to, to oversee export of some of the uh, defense items which they produce. And it's not only meant for Vietnam, but also for the uh, rest of the Asian countries. Right. Mr. Sajid Har, uh, given stress on the strategic and military relations, you think the, the other part or the other facet of, of ties happens to be trade, business and exploring market in terms of Indian exports. Is there a reason to explore Vietnam as market for India or you think that we have explored Vietnam enough in terms of trade and, and business? No, I think that, uh, uh, you know, much more potential is available. As I had mentioned, you know, it's just about $15 billion, $13 billion as of now. We are planning, you know, we are striving for achieving a target of $15 billion by next year. In terms of investments also, I think this is uh, uh, just above $1 billion as far as uh, India's exports to uh, India's investment in Vietnam is concerned and also not very significant as far as the Vietnamese investments. So I think the potential is huge because mm. the Vietnamese economy is growing very rapidly and Indian economy is also growing. It's the fastest growing major economy. So we can, there is real great uh, possibilities of the two countries working together, identifying new areas, identifying new uh, fields, sectors of cooperation. Uh, oil and gas exploration is definitely one of those. Uh, you would recall that uh, India uh, OVL and uh, the uh, Vietnamese petroleum, they were cooperating in the uh, high seas uh, on the, mm -hmm. in the exclusive economic zone of uh, Vietnam for prospecting oil and gas. There was a problem with China also because uh, these two blocks on which they were prospecting, 127, 128, China uh, maintained that uh, they were a part of uh, their uh, territory. And so uh, no exploration should take place without seeking the permission. But of course that is going on and I think that should continue. So I feel in a wide range of areas, it's not only pharmaceuticals, it's also new areas, whether it is uh, IT, whether it is agro-processing, whether it is agrochemicals. There are a whole range of areas where uh, both the countries uh, can work together, can uh, uh, take the relationship forward. You know, you mentioned, uh, Rajat, also about the strategic convergence between mm -hmm. the two. I think uh, relations between India and Vietnam really reflect a very balanced mix because both India and Vietnam have the same position as far as, let us say, the issues uh, in the uh, uh, maritime uh, uh, area of South China Sea are concerned. Both of them, you know, they regard that area as uh, Indo-Pacific. You know, right. this is something that uh, China is not particularly happy with. You would recall that when uh, President Covind had visited uh, Vietnam last uh, year, end of last year, then the joint agreement does talk about uh, maintaining peace and tranquility and security and prosperity in the Indo-Pacific area, uh, ensuring that uh, the sea lanes of communication are maintained, overflights are maintained, international uh, law, maritime law is respected. So these are all issues that, uh, these are all positions that India also has. So both mm. of them have convergence of views uh, broadly on all issues relating to uh, security and defense in that area. And I think that really leaves uh, both of us open. And that is why there has been much greater interaction also mm. in the area of people-to-people -people contact. You know, the Indian Cultural Center has been established in Vietnam in 2016. The session was taken inaugurated in 2017. Similarly, a center of Vietnamese relation has been established here. There has been a center of Indian studies that has been established in the universities there. So I think across the board, there are great possibilities. 
and huge potential which uh, the visit of the uh, uh, vice president i think this is going to uh, provide a very significant impetus you know as i mentioned at not only at the level of the leadership but also at the ministerial level last year we also had the visit of the external affairs minister we also right. had the visit of the raksha mantri so mm -hmm. even at operational levels and vice versa there have been visits from vietnam also to india so i think both the countries are looking very seriously at each other to enhance uh, and uh, broaden the partnership in uh, a multifaceted manner I'll take your uh, view on the cultural ties, but uh, uh, Professor Pan is sticking to the strategic affair. I mean, given the two nations accord a status, to, important status to each other, given the geopolitics, you think have we been able to explore the Vietnamese weapon market or arms market to say off? Well, I think uh, we are trying to get there, but I think mm. there is still uh, uh, you know much more that can be done. Uh, especially, I think if you look at uh, and, you know at the sourcing of where Vietnamese have got their much of their um, historically uh, their weapon systems, India has mm. also been uh, much of this much of it has been Russian vintage. So there is a there is a great potential there in terms of what we can do to move forward on that in that area. There is also the kind of uh, co-production that we are doing now. Uh, there has been discussions around Brahmos. Uh, it has not been yet uh, finalized. Uh, so there has been a range of issues on which uh, you know we have uh, the, the discussions have moved forward and given the discussion that I think earlier um, uh, uh, you know was was being talked about in terms of the synergy that we have uh, among the three services and how they have been interacting now uh, at operational level for a very long time. Uh, I think this is one area where perhaps uh, much more can be done and much much more will be done because I think that's the in a, in a sense that the next step for the for once you have the geostrategic convergence mm -hmm. that's where you go uh, in terms of uh, how you want to operationalize your your partnership uh, and i think the larger issue when you look at you know the the balance of power changing so rapidly both for vietnam and for india when you look at the kinds of questions that, that both are facing in terms of a uh, the rise of china b uh, a lack of uh, sort of support from the americans to the to the regional security architecture and also the flux within the asean uh, and and the desire within ASEAN member states to see India emerge as a as a uh, as a as a security provider in some senses, I think Vietnam becomes a very important point, a very important uh, in nation, which perhaps allows India that leeway into the, the larger Vietnamese, uh, larger Southeast Asian uh, architecture. And I think that is something that that the discussions have been going on. But I think you are right that I that while the convergence has been mm -hmm. amplified uh, to a large extent. I think the defense relationship has not yet moved, uh, you know, with that kind of a speed that right. w once at least uh, some had expected. That look, this is great degree of convergence, mm -hmm. but defense has lagged behind. Apart from the uh, uh, naval exercises and what we do at bilateral, multilateral levels, I think defense cooperation, bilateral defense cooperation, uh, has been somewhat lagging. Which I think is, has been the impetus. If you look at the last few years, that has been the, where the impetus has been. And I hope that this visit and for future visits also uh, clarify some of those aspects, which I think both India and Vietnam will remain very keen about. Uh, Vikriti Anand, you also see that both the countries exploring a defense market for each other and possibly, as Mr. Pant also pointed out, that, I mean, given the ties go back a long way, yet this is one particular sector where there is convergence, yet market hasn't been explored fully. Well, there I agree with him and you that the market has not been uh, I mean defense market. Huh? defense market defense uh, market defense market has yeah. been uh, in addition to the other uh, even market. the economic market we right. see something of that also because if you look at the trade between uh, China and Vietnam it's crossed 106 billion dollars hmm. so uh, and uh, as far as Vietnam and China are concerned they are okay at party to party level but uh, they have uh, different security uh, perceptions on the South China Sea. Mm -hmm. Now here, uh, while uh, Vietnam and India do share uh, the security perceptions, uh, yet uh, both India and Vietnam, they are uh, hesitant to go beyond a point. I think there is a degree of uh, hesitation, mm -hmm. which perhaps uh, India as a larger country should be able to overcome. Now, coming to the question of the uh, defense uh, trade, yes, uh, India has been trying to explore the possibilities of uh, exporting more or and as also do some sort of a co-production with uh, 
uh, Vietnam. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, about two years back, our uh, defense minister did say that uh, uh, we are in a position to export 10% of our, uh, uh, some of these uh, systems like uh, Akash surface to air missiles, uh, which uh, possibly Vietnam could uh, 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 take import from us. Even uh, some of the uh, missiles, uh, surface to surface missiles like Prahar missile. So, uh, but I think beyond a certain uh, stage of discussions, these things have not uh, moved forward, and there is a need to uh, uh, put some push or push forward such kind of uh, export proposals. Uh, and I'm sure, uh, besides the uh, uh, improving their uh, 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 training aspects as also the other operational issues, providing them with uh, 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 improved uh, surveillance or uh, reconnaissance capabilities, uh, sharing of intelligence. I think these are some of the areas uh, we can do much better with Vietnam. Mr. Sajjan Har, I mean, you, you're pointing out at the cultural ties between the two countries. The Vice President would be addressing an uh, event, Buddhist approach to global leadership and shared responsibility for sustainable society. There are cultural affinity, there are commonalities, yet, I mean, as I said earlier in my opening remarks, not much is known about Vietnam. Why, why uh, you think, what perhaps could have been the reason for this? You know, Rajat, one of the reasons I think is that possibly in terms of uh, cultural proximity, mm. India is much closer to, let us say, Thailand, although mm. that is also, you know, in terms of Buddhism and, uh, you know, Hinduism also, the Brahminical rites and whatever is done, they are very well regarded there. Or, let us say, in Cambodia, you mm. know, the Angkor Wat yeah. and the uh, renovation, etc., etc. So, in that sense, Vietnam is a little distant. The other countries, for instance, whether it is Indonesia, where you have uh, Yogyakarta, you have uh, Borobudur, you have Bali, you have the whole historical experience of the Sri Vijaya Empire from the 6th century AD till about 13th, 14th century AD. So the impact of Indian culture and civilization also in terms of architecture and sculptures is very uh, clearly visible. In that sense, uh, Vietnam is a little distant. So, you know, in, uh, even if you look at the number of Indian residents who are there, mm -hmm. just about 3,000, you know, so the number is also not large. But definitely as far as uh, the charm culture of uh, Vietnam, that maintains a very, very close proximity to Indian uh, culture and civilization. And of course, Buddhism binds us together. So I think it is very, very appropriate that uh, the Honorable Vice President has gone there on this very important occasion because Vesak is uh, the day of the birth of uh, Lord Buddha, of his enlightenment and of his renunciation. So it's a very, very important uh, uh, event and uh, mm. the Vice President will be speaking on that occasion, speaking about the concept of leadership in uh, Buddhist philosophy and uh, of uh, how to bring about sustainable societies. So I think this definitely is uh, a step in the right direction in bringing the countries uh, together in terms of uh, culture, in terms of people-to-people -people contact, in terms of better understanding and appreciation of each other's uh, uh, cultural past and uh, philosophies. Professor Pant, uh, just briefly, you, you also think that having using cultural ties, a soft power will will only enhance the ties between two countries. Uh, absolutely, and I think... I, I uh, would like to also ask about the number of tourists, uh, that, that exchange between India and Vietnam. See, this is one area where I think we have been underperforming for quite some time. I mean, this is uh, very ironical that, uh, mm. you know, we have these great linkages with Southeast Asian neighbours, and yet we have never explored this part of, of the relationship. Uh, and if you, as you rightly point out, uh, if you think of, for example, how many Indian students are there in uh, go to Vietnam, how many Vietnamese students come to India, the numbers are very, very small. And it's only now that we have started, for example, the ambassador mentioned a center for Vietnam studies here, Indian studies there. But I think it's, it's, it's very late in the day coming that we have had this historical relationship and we have not explored that aspect of the relationship. Mm. So I think, uh, and, and uh, to give credit to this government, I think they have had, they made this culture, commerce and connectivity three 
three pillars of their outreach to Southeast Asia, which I think uh, should always have been one aspect of, of, our, of our engagement with the region because the cultural aspect is so important and also what has historically uh, you know, bound us to the region. So in that sense, I think we are coming back to that, to that, to that central question of our relationship with the country. And I think uh, given the time and the, and the sort of, um, uh, you know, the reason for Mr. Uh, for, the, for Vice President's visit to, the, to, to Vietnam is an indicator of how this, this is going to be, uh, be, this is going to become very, very prominent going forward in this, in this engagement. Well, we have to wrap it up here. It's a, it's a vast topic given the cultural ties between the two countries go back a long way. And now with Vice President of India and Venkaya Naidu going for four to visit to Vietnam, we can only expect relations between the two countries only getting better and also exploring the areas which hasn't been explored so far. Thank you for watching Big Picture.